Hi there, my name is Dave and this is a video about how to drive and camp in my Vanagon, the Mount Hood. So first it's a four speed and uh, to get into reverse you have to actually push down, like down into the floor a little bit, over to the left and up and then that gets you right into reverse. And then the other ship gears are indicated. It's got a pretty smooth clutch. So into sometimes first gear can be hard to find compared to third, but into first gear, up and away you go. Uh, it has Subaru engine, so the torque band is pretty wide, so it's easy to drive and um, you can keep up with traffic. Uh, so we also has upgraded brakes, so the stopping is better uh, than other Vanagans. A uh, few things to point out up here has a new stereo, gets pretty loud, has a subwoofer for you. You can connect to that through Bluetooth or with a cable. Um, there's a place for your phone right here and gauges up on the front. You have a temperature gauge which should sit at about 80 Celsius, it's Canadian uh, metric. Uh, you got voltage here that should say just under 12 most of the time. And then an oil pressure gauge which sits between one and two once you've got the engine warmed up. Okay, this temperature gauge is the one you want to trust. The one actually original to the car after the engine conversion to the Subaru, that one stopped working but you can just pay attention to this one up here. Um, light switch is over here on the left, uh, you know, dial to adjust illumination on all your gauges. <clears throat> and everything else is pretty easy. Uh, you know, a lot of these controls have all been replaced, but um, for instance, when you do the windshield washers, it's uh, you know, not quite as powerful as a modern one is. Um, it's got power steering, so the steering is pretty easy to use. And uh, when you're driving along, these little wing windows are nice because at low speeds, you can flip them like that to get fresh air, or at higher speeds, you just let them just barely be open and that'll draw air in from the skylight and around you uh, to help you stay cool on hot days. The, uh, the windows, um, the power window does work over here on the driver's side. The power window doesn't work on the left, so if you have to adjust that, just adjust it with your fingers when you're ready to drive. All right, well, that's the basics. Uh, other than that, you know, Vanningans aren't really meant to go fast, so even though this has an engine upgrade, um, I really don't recommend you ever go over 65 and in fact since this has upgraded tires that are a little larger when it says you're going 65 here you're actually going about 69 so you know I'd keep it in the low 60s that's a safe speed to be on the highway in such a boxy um, vehicle and uh, don't let it fool you because it will go faster if you want to all right I'm gonna park it now and uh, I'm gonna show you how the camping features work so I'll see you in a minute Hi, it's Dave again, and this is the my van again, the Mount Hood. I'm going to show you the camping features of it now. So, doors go down, slide over. This is the inside of the camper van. Before I hop in, I just want to show you up here, this smaller key, small round key, it says NO83, that unlocks this. And inside here, there are camping chairs and a uh, shade slash rain tent to set up like over a picnic table or over the kitchen table that I provide. Okay, let's see the camping gear in here. All right, first we, uh, we provide a cooler so you can keep all your stuff cold. You gotta get the ice in there. Right here you have your Go Camp um, manual that has all the information about the van and your contract in here and insurance information in case you need that. I provide a bottle of hand sanitizer for you in this organizer. Next, I have a small trash can that seals with trash bags there are more trash bags for that hidden up behind the rear door up on the shelf okay over here this rear facing seat opens up and this is for your dry goods you can you can fit four to six bags of groceries under there and some miscellaneous stuff now one thing I should point out is there's a rear facing seat belt um, for this seat that pulls across and connects right here it's a bit unusual because you pull it out from the bottom so just if you're trying to use that remember you pull from the bottom instead of the top all right while you're camping here's your power so this is the inverter it connects to a camping battery that is stored under this seat 
Okay, that camping battery charges automatically as you're driving. It takes about 45 minutes to an hour to fully recharge. Uh, you can turn that on, light comes on. There's a USB plug here you can use to charge your devices when the van is not running or when it is running. In addition, there are, is a USB um, charging port right above the glove compartment in the front that you can use while you're driving as well. I like to actually stick my phone right in here and have a charging cable go right up there. Convenient place so you, you always know where your phone is. If you use the 110 outlet here, it will drain the battery much faster. So I just rec recommend using uh, your 12 volt charging cables here, okay? I told you the camping battery is located under there. All the um, fuses for that are also located under this seat. So in case some of the interior lighting in here, this inverter stopped working and you had to replace a fuse, you would find those fuses under this seat by sliding the seat forward. Replacement fuses are in the glove box in front of the passenger seat. Under this seat here, there's actually the starting battery for the vehicle. So if you had to jump start this vehicle, you would slide this seat forward, pull up the access hatch here, uh, and then uh, use the charging cables to charge it there. Okay. Otherwise, camping gear in here, we have a uh, fire extinguisher mounted here. You pull it out, pull this red pin, aim and shoot to put out a fire if you actually had to do that at the campsite. Now, uh, let's see. I'm gonna sit on this chair and I'm gonna pull up, this is our dining table. If it's raining outside, you wanna hang out inside. Lift this up, clicks into place, and then you can be here. Both sides can use it, convenient place. There's a little lever you pull here, it closes, and you have to snap it into place, like that. Okay, <sighs> let's talk about the lighting in here. We have three lights in the back. These are all reading lights. They go off the camping battery, they're adjustable. It's nice to you know, sit in here in the evening if you want, use those. General lighting in the van, there's a switch right above the door here, okay? That adjusts these lights. Those lights are on a dimmer, which is located here, up and down, okay? There is an additional set of lights up higher inside the pop top. Those lights are also controlled by that same dimmer switch. Okay, back off with that switch right there. Um, let's show you, since I'm right here, let's show you how to pop the top. If you get close, actually let's turn the light on so you can see. This button right here is depressed while this is locked. To free up the pop top and raise it for uh, sleeping up there, just to have more space in here, you put your both hands up behind this, pull towards you, it clicks that button out. Now, you can lift up. There are shocks that actually help you lift this up located in the back. You lift it up, push the brace forward, and now the pop top's open. Let's take a peek towards the back in here. This is the upper bed. Um, you may or may not use the upper bed. If you're just gonna use the lower bed, then you can just use this as storage during the day. If you are gonna use the upper bed for sleeping, you wanna uh, put it into place by pulling it towards you then lifting it up, that way it'll clear the ceiling, comes all the way down, and then you have the upper bed area. And again, that upper bed switch is, you can reach from the upper bed area for the lights right here, on, off. Skylight above you right there. Let's put it back now. When you go to lower, this, you pull the brace towards yourself. The shocks will keep it from coming down suddenly, okay? You gently let it down, okay, gently. Then you, you make sure that the fabric is not getting pinched in your latch there, and, then, and not getting pinched underneath the side supports. You pull it forward into the front corners and then actually pull any excess of the folds up so that it's not hanging down outside the vehicle. Okay, just like that. Once you got it into place, pull it down, that pops back into place. You're ready to run on the highway again. Okay, I mentioned the skylight is here earlier. If you wanna open this skylight, 
uh, there's a latch on the back side with a little button that you slide out of the way. You go to close it, you pull the latch down, bend it 90 degrees, close. If you want to open it, flex it, pull the sliding tab out, push the handle up, and then lock it into place. Okay, that leaves it open. All right, let's take a look at the bedding here, and then we'll move to the back so you can see where we store things. All right, so this is the lower bed, and to have it fold out, there's a little latch here you pull on. So sometimes you have to put a little weight there, put a little weight on, pull the latch out, then you can lift this up. And to make the bed, you lift it up and you pull it out like this, and the whole bed will flatten out, okay? There's an additional pad in the back. Also under here, there's a little support right there, we have additional things for your camping. These are like big Lego blocks. You use them to put under the tires to make the vehicle uh, level for sleeping. Uh, I have a couple brooms here for tidying up if you want to keep the vehicle more tidy. And then this is an additional set of uh, shades for the front three windows of the van. These, this shade in combination with the regular window shades enables you to shut off all the windows of the vehicle if you want privacy or you're trying to keep the sun out in the morning. Okay. Mm -hmm. Additionally in here, if it's rainy, opposite condition of sunny, we have a rain fly. This uh, attaches to the pop top and then you can pull it up and extend it over the vehicle just like the rain fly on a tent. And that'll help you stay really dry in case it's a very rainy day or night mm -hmm. in the van. Additionally under here, we got a tarp. Who knows, you always need a tarp for something. And we have um, jumper cables, uh, a jack, a jack stand, um, and a tire iron uh, in case you have to deal with a flat tire. If you go around to the back, you'll see that the spare tire is mounted um, to the back door of the vehicle. Okay, to close this, again, lift it up, pull the support down, make sure it locks into place. You have shoulder seat belts on each side of the vehicle. Um, oh, and one other thing to show here, if uh, you need a grab and go flashlight, I have three magnetic ones mounted up here to the balance magnetically, pull them off, two different modes for them to turn on and off, conveniently store right back up there. All right, let's pop out to the back and uh, I'll show you what gear we have back there. Uh, and also where the, uh, you can check the oil and the water on the vehicle. Okay, now come over here so we can get a good view. To open the door in the back, you first have to swing this tire out of the way. To do that, there are two latches side by side. The one that is lower gets pushed down and the one that is higher gets pushed up. So you push them opposite of each other, that frees it, you swing it out of the way. Okay, now the lock for the door takes the main key that you use for the ignition, turn it 90 degrees so it's flat, push the button in, and then you can lift up the door. All right, in here, in this box that says bedding, yeah, you guessed it, there's bedding in there. We have uh, your comforters and bottom sheets for both the upper and lower beds are stored in there. And then in this box that says cooking, yes, you guessed it again, you've got your entire kitchen. There's a Coleman stove in here, pots, pans, plates, uh, coffee cups, wine glasses, dishcloth, everything you need to cook, including oils, salt and pepper, and some spices are all in there. This table is here um, as an additional cooking table in case you're somewhere that doesn't have a uh, picnic table. And inside this large door are four pillows up on top, uh, two extra blankets down below, and extra uh, uh, beach towels down below. There's also the original manual to the vehicle is stored down there as well. So that's behind the big door. Behind the smaller door, there's propane for your stove for the trip. There are some Lysol wipes. Uh, there is some uh, a little extra coolant, um, some extra motor oil if you need to top anything off. All stored in here. Also some flares and some uh, some wrenches are there. Okay. One other thing, if you happen to need to add oil to this vehicle, under this pad here, this is actually how you access the engine. There's a removal panel 
with just two latches that open, you take that out and you could access the oil filler tube right there, okay? But how you would even know if that was necessary, and it shouldn't be necessary because we'll send it away full, but if you were to check, it's right here. This yellow handle pulls out a long um, oil dipstick, and then next to it, there's an access lid where you can check the coolant and see that it's between these two marks for minimum and maximum. So it's a good thing to do that if you've been driving a long time and um, you're stopped at the gas station. You can just take a quick peek inside there. Um, this upper shelf here, as I mentioned, we have extra trash cans. We also have a first aid kit. We have some bug spray, uh, some wet wipes, some sunscreen, uh, some toilet paper, and some hand sanitizer. And uh, there is a hatchet up there as well in case you need one of those to split some firewood. So that uh, wraps up everything that's in the back. It wraps up all our camping instruction. And I believe that wraps up everything you need to know about the Mutton Hood. I hope you have a great trip and um, thanks for watching.